Hello everyone, and thank you for attending this webinar on Catalyst and Active Surface Characterization. My name is Jeff Canvin, and I will be the moderator for this webinar. Before we begin, we would like to cover a few housekeeping items. At the bottom of your screen are multiple engagement tools you can use. You can expand your slide area or maximize it to full screen by clicking on the arrows in the top right corner. If you have any questions during the webcast, you can submit them through the Q&A. We will try to answer these during the webcast, but if we run out of time, it will be answered later via email. Additional materials are available in the resource list. We encourage you to download any resources or links that you may find useful. Some networks cause slides to advance more slowly than others, so logging off your VPN is recommended. If your slides are behind, pushing F5 on your keyboard will refresh the page. If you experience any problems during the session, you can find answers to some common technical issues located in the Help Engagement tool at the bottom of your screen. An on-demand version of the webcast will be available after today's webcast and will be emailed to you once the session has concluded. I'm pleased to introduce today's speakers, Chris Castaldo and Hong Nayen. Chris joined Micromertics in 2012 and is currently an application scientist and also leads the validation and testing of new instruments and software. He has extensive experience with customer education, both in person and with our online training programs. Chris has a wide range of expertise, including physisorption, gas displacement pycnometry, particle sizing, and chemisorption. Our second speaker, Hong Nayen, joined Micromertics in 2019 and was promoted to his current role as an application scientist in 2020. Hong's expertise are in the areas of surface area, porosity, chemisorption, and temperature program methods. Chris and Hong, it is an honor for me to introduce you today. We are so glad you could be here today to share your insights on AutoChem 3, Catalyst and Active Surface Characterization. In this webinar, we will cover the new features of the AutoChem 3 and talk about the different methods used for characterizing real catalysts. The new AutoChem 3 is faster, easier to use, and has improved operator safety features. The high sensitivity thermal conductivity detector is twice as sensitive as alternatives, making it possible to measure smaller samples and detect secondary reactions. Connecting sample tubes with the new Quick Connect retention system is faster, easier, and more efficient than systems that use threaded parts. The auto trap ensures users will never have to make another slush bath, saving hours per day. The number of gas inlets is increased to 18 to reduce or remove the necessity to change out gases. The AutoChem 3 has the lowest internal gas volume of any instrument of this type, increasing the peak resolution and decreasing the signal tailing. The signal stability is further increased by four internal temperature controlled zones. The AutoCool system rapidly cools the sample tube, saving time on every experiment. The AutoCool system rapidly cools the sample, saving time on every experiment. The furnace has the capability of reaching a maximum temperature of 1200 degrees Celsius, the highest in the industry. Heating rates can be controlled from 0.1 to 100 Celsius per minute. The patented Quick Connect design makes the sample tube installation faster, easier, and more reliable than traditional designs. Instead of having a separate nut and ferrule for each side of the sample tube, there is now only one sample collar. The Quick Connect ensures the sample tube is sealed in place and does not rely on tightening nuts. The sample port has its own temperature control, allowing for more efficient ramp rates and the ability to reduce the temperature on the sample collar at the end of the analysis, allowing the sample tube assembly to be removed without heat gloves. The auto trap replaces the conventional slush bath with zeolite beads to remove moisture during TPR experiments. This is a more effective method, ensuring time is not spent making slush baths or worrying if the slush bath will last the length of the experiment. The auto trap can be used for many hours without the risk of losing its effectiveness. It can be regenerated on the instrument with a program method step during any experiment, allowing it to be performed at any time. Memorizing flow paths or valves orientations and location is no longer required when programming an experiment. 
This process is now illustrated by showing the state of the instrument at every step of the method, highlighting the differences from one step to the next. The vapor generator adds additional functionality with the ability to use liquids such as water, alcohol, amines, and more. In addition to vapor being pulsed over the sample, it can now be flowed continuously, allowing for an even faster analysis. The temperature control system allows vapor injection repeatability to be better than 1%. Both pulse and continuous flow vapor calibrations are fully automated. The new integrated auto cool system reduces analysis time by rapidly reaching target temperatures during cool down steps. We can see the AutoChem 3 requires less than a third of the time its predecessor does to cool down from 500 to 30 Celsius. The AutoChem 3 performs pulse chemisorption, temperature program experiments such as reduction, oxidation, desorption, and surface reactions. It can also do a dynamic BET and breakthrough. The type of information we get from these methods are metal dispersion, metallic surface area, active surface area, crystallite size, heat of desorption, activation energy, and BET surface area. Typical materials of interest are metal supported oxide, zeolite, and fuel cell catalyst, as well as advanced battery anode materials. Now, we will take a look at the dynamic chemisorption and temperature program methods. The first step for a pulse chemisorption is to prepare it. Samples might be degassed or calcined and then reduced. After the sample is reduced, a steady stream of inert gas flows over the sample. When the baseline is stable, the active gas is injected into the inert gas stream. Any active gas that adsorbs on the sample does not reach the TCD. We can see pulse 1 adsorbs the majority of the active gas and only a small amount makes it to the detector based on the size of the peak. Less active gas from pulse 2 interacts with the sample since it's partially saturated. Eventually we get to pulse N where the sample is fully saturated with no adsorption and the full active gas injection makes it to the detector. By knowing the volume of the injection loop, the volume of adsorbed gas can be quantified through peak integration. Pulse chemisorption results can give metal dispersion, active metal area, oxygen storage capacity, crystallite size, and strong chemisorption uptake. Here are the results for hydrogen sorption on platinum alumina. Markers are placed on the baseline before and after an injection to calculate the peak area. The hydrogen from the first two injections fully adsorb on the material. Injection three shows partial adsorption. The full quantity of hydrogen from injections four, five, and six make it to the detector indicating the sample is saturated. Here we can see carbon monoxide adsorption on the same material. Injections 1, 2, and 3 show full adsorption. Injection 4 shows partial adsorption. And injections 5, 6, and 7 show saturation. Here are the results for both hydrogen and carbon monoxide pulsed on platinum alumina. We can see the reports are nice and organized with the adsorbed quantities listed in the peak table and the results of interest, such as metal dispersion, located at the bottom. These two sets of results show another example of pulse chemisorption with carbon monoxide and hydrogen on palladium alumina. The platinum alumina analysis on the AutoChem 3 using the AutoCool versus the AutoChem 2 using the QuickCool is about 49 minutes faster. We can also see the baseline signal on the AutoChem 3 has less noise than the AutoChem 2 and clearly more stable. At this point, I will pass it over to Hong, who will continue the presentation. Thanks, everyone. Over to you, Hong. Thank you, Chris. Another possible characterization method is temperature program reduction, which converts a metal oxide to metal. Typical, typical reducing gas is hydrogen and argon, and water is formed. A linear temperature ramp rate is applied to the sample, and as the temperature increases, we see that the reduction is occurring. A cold trap or sorption trap is used to remove the moisture before it reaches a highly sensitive thermal conductivity sensor. The reduction fingerprint and individual peak temperatures depend on many factors, including the metal oxide, particle sizes, interactions with supporting material, oxidation states, and analysis conditions. Not all metal oxides are easily reducible. In the chart on the right, metal oxides that have a higher Gibbs free energy are more difficult. The blue and green metal oxides may be able to reduce. For the metal oxides labeled in blue, Low partial pressures of water and high temperatures may help with the reduction. The furnace on the 2930 
is able to ramp to 1200C in these more difficult cases. As an example, a commercial supported copper oxide is used for comparison on both the AutoChem 2 and AutoChem 3. Analysis conditions are kept very similar, except with how the moisture is trapped. The AutoChem 2 uses a cold trap, which is a combination of liquid nitrogen and IPA to create a slurry. The AutoChem 3 uses the sorption trap, which was regenerated in situ. There is a higher TCD signal intensity on the AutoChem 3 than the 2, an increase of 50%. The improved sensitivity was also coupled with an improvement with noise. Zooming on the signals, the figure on the right shows the comparison of the signal noise between the two. There is a huge improvement on the 2930. The combination of a higher signal intensity and additional reduction in noise is extremely beneficial especially in cases where there is low levels of reducible species in the material, or when the sample quantities are limited. To demonstrate this, the same 13% copper oxide material was used, but at the smallest amount without any additional modifications to the sample. One bead of the material, weighing 1.2 milligrams, was measured. This equates to two micromoles of copper oxide based on the loading. The figure on the right is the corresponding TPR. The reduction peak temperatures and peak errors could be readily resolved and it is clearly separated from the signal noise or baseline. When needed, the conversion of the TCD signals for quantitative analysis is automated. The system automatically dilutes carrier and loop gas with a blending valve for a 11-point calibration curve as seen in the figure on the left. It also measures loop temperature and pressures, which can contribute as much errors as 5%. This does not require analysis using multiple runs of pure metal oxides or standards to generate the calibration. Here is an example of the temperature program reduction of silver oxide. On the left figure, the red curve is the TCD signal plotted against time. Once the calibration file is applied, the system automatically converts the TCD signal to the gas flow rate of the active gas. In this case, it is hydrogen as shown in the figures to the right. Overlaid with the signal plot on the left is a green curve, which represents the sample temperature. The curve is plotted against the secondary y-axis and is the temperature monitored. The linear ramp rate of the temperature is well maintained throughout the temperature program reduction. Here is another example with tungsten oxide. The reduction fingerprint of this material shows multiple oxidation states and reduction requiring higher temperatures. This TPR was performed to 1200C, and the temperature ramp rates are well maintained and completely linear throughout this range. Another method that is used on the AutoChem is measuring the acidity of the catalyst by performing a temperature program desorption or surface reaction. Activation can be performed in situ with a dedicated preparation pathway. A probe is selected based on type of asset sites. Depending on the probe use, it may be necessary to use a mass spec to aid with the data reduction. Here is an example of a temperature program desorption. For total acid sites, ammonia can be used, and for basic sites, carbon dioxide can be used as a probe. By changing the linear ramp rates, calculations of heats of desorptions can also be performed. Data can also be viewed in stack form. Here is an example of pneumonia TPD from ZSM from both the AutoChem 2 and AutoChem 3, demonstrating the same types of data are obtained. Here the temperatures are separated into their own y-axis scale. The zoom-in view is especially useful if experiments or signals are large in comparison to each other and a quick comparison is needed. Both data sets are consistent between the two instruments. And here we also see the improvement on the noise on the AutoChem 3. Temperature program decomposition of calcium oxalate is one of the many available reference materials we offer. Both the TCD and mass spec signals are shown in stack form. The synchronization of the signal to time and temperature are optimized by the low dead volume of the AutoChem 3, the triggering and the additional of temperature calibrations between the mass spec and the AutoChem 3. Notice that the 3D composition products of calcium oxalate, water, carbon monoxide, and carbon dioxide are perfectly synchronized with the TCD signals. Data can be viewed as individual signals, top left figure, or such as the temperature versus time, the bottom left figure. 
Customized graphs with specific signals can also be overlaid and the x-axis can also be selected on a temperature basis. For example, the overlay of the three mass spec products are plotted against temperature on the bottom right graph. Customizations of the graphs such as color labels and signals can be directly copied and pasted. Temperature program reactions can also give information regarding the surface of the catalyst. For example, this is an illustration of using isopropylamine. After an in situ activation, the first step saturates isopropylamine onto the surface either as pulse injections or as a continuous flow through a vapor generator. As temperature linearly increases, the unreacted isopropylamine desorbs from the weak sites. It follows with a surface reaction producing propene which leaves the surface and finally followed by the desorption of pneumonia. For surface reactions, a mass spec is recommended. The probe selection is dependent on the surface sites being characterized. Different isomers can be selected to gain more information regarding probe accessibility and surface interactions such as steric interactions. Shown above are examples of the amine decomposition or surface reactions with two propylamines. Here is the signals in stacked form on a ZSM5. The top signal is the TCD signal. As shown previously, the isopropylamine desorbs first. Concurrently, propene and ammonia are detected by the decomposition at these sites. In addition to this type of information, quantification of these Bronsted sites can be performed by a mass spec calibration of the propene signal. Here is an example of using isopropylamine as a probe for two different zeolites. The left figure is of the ZSM5 shown previously, and YZ light is shown on the right. Another example of temperature program surface reaction is using methanol as a probe. This has the advantage of characterizing the metal oxide rather than reducing the metal oxide to the metal form, which changes the material. Methanol can be sorbs with the metal oxide and follows with the dissociative adsorption depending on the interaction it has with the surface. Depending on the site, the oxidation products will be different. For acid sites, dimethyl ether is formed. At basic sites, carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide are formed. On redox sites, formaldehyde is formed. Shown here from left to right are ferrite, ZSM5, and YZ light, and the mass spec signals collected. Olefins and products driven by specific site interactions described on the previous slides are shown in the stack form. The parent methanol that is weakly adsorbed is desorbed first, and above 250 C, olefins are formed. The Z light shows a dominance of acid sites, as seen in the formation of dimethyl ether. There are less numbers of basic sites as seen by signals of CO2. In summary, the AutoCAM 3 is optimized for catalyst characterization. Typical methods and examples were demonstrated today. The instrument is equipped with even more capabilities while making characterization much simpler with improved software and hardware. Temperature program reduction is fully automated without requiring user intervention or manually creating a cold trap. The performance of the system is improved, such as having twice the signal to noise ratios as previous generations. Integration of the mass spec for temperature program reactions has both hardware and software support, ensuring proper synchronization of time and temperature. User interface is made to be intuitive, especially when customizing analysis conditions. Visual graphics of the analysis conditions simplifies the creation as well as troubleshooting. Thank you everyone for watching. Chris and I will take any questions you have now.